Hello and welcome back to another section of this complete Angular course. Now, in this section, we are going to learn about standalone components, which is yet another new feature in Angular introduced in Angular version 14. And in this section, we will learn all about standalone components and we will try to understand what this feature is all about, why standalone components were introduced, and what problem does it solve. Now, when we create an Angular application, we need to write a lot of boilerplate codes. For example, when we create a new component or a directive, we need to declare it in the ng module of the module class so that Angular knows about them. In the same way, when we create a service, a pipe, or when we define a route, we need to add them in the ng module of a module class. If we have other modules in our Angular application, we also need to import or export them within the modules. And if we forget to do it, our Angular application will not work properly and we might get some runtime errors. So it's a lot of boilerplate code which we as a developer has to write and we are doing some extra work there. And it can make things a little bit difficult because if we forget to add something to ng module, the application will crash. And Modules are required by Angular because it needs to know what building blocks we are going to use in our Angular application for its internal use. However, it would be great if we can get rid of this extra step of declaring everything in the edgy module after creating it. And that we can achieve with the help of standalone components. In Angular, a standalone component is a special type of component that does not require to be declared in ng module of a module class. As we have seen so far, when we create a component in Angular, we need to declare them within an ng module of a module class in order for them to work. Right. So standalone components, and it was introduced in Angular version 14, it basically simplifies the development process by eliminating the need for ng modules, that is the module class. And this makes it easier to create and use components without worrying about declaring them somewhere. So basically, standalone components don't need to be declared in any ng module. Also, they streamline the development experience by reducing the boilerplate code. And standalone components can still be used alongside components within ng modules. So if we want, we can also mix standalone components and standard components in our Angular application. In simple words, standalone components are a powerful feature that can help you build Angular application more efficiently without depending on a module file like app module. So as we learned in the Angular module section, every Angular application must have at least one module. And that statement is no more true. Now an Angular application can be created without a module class, without an ng module. And we can do that with the help of standalone components. So in this section, we will try to understand the concept of standalone components by first migrating a standard Angular application to a standalone Angular application. And this we will do by migrating each standard components and directives of our Angular application to standalone components and directives. And we will make sure that services works properly with these standalone components. And we will also look into some advanced concepts like adding routings and lazy loading with standalone components. Now, in order to learn standalone component, here I have created a very simple Angular application. So this is the home page of the Angular application. We also have some links as you can see here, but currently these links are not working because I have not added any routing for these links. Basically what we have here is, let me go to VS code. So here I have created this Angular standalone project. There, if I go to source folder, you will see that we have an app component. In the app component, we have a home component. So if I open the HTML of app component, so in there, we are defining our links, the home link, about link and courses link, and then we are calling the home component. So in the app, this link, which you see, we have defined it in the app component. And from the app component, we are also calling the home component. So again, if I go back, here we are using the selector of home component. So it will render the view of home component, right? So if I go to home component, and if I open the HTML of home component, there you will see that we have a section. In that section, we have an H2 element and we have two paragraphs. 
so basically if i go back to our application this h2 element and these two paragraphs it is coming from home component and from within the home component we are also calling another component called detail component and the selector for detail component is app detail so after displaying this h2 element and these two paragraph elements you can see in the web page we are displaying this content also right so this content it is coming from detail component so let's go back to vs code and now there let me open detail component so if i open the html of detail component here we have the html for detail component okay we have a section so this section is basically rendering this complete content okay so there we have one h3 element we have these bullet list and we have this paragraph so if i go back we have this h3 element we have this div okay and then we have this paragraph in this div we are displaying some unordered list now on this div as you can see we are using a directive called app highlight and we also have a button here on which we are listening to click event so let me first show you what this on click method is doing if i go to detail component.ts there when this on click method is called we are basically calling a service so if i open this shared folder there i have created an action service okay and what this service is simply going to do is it is going to check the value of this value property okay so this value is a boolean property and initially its value is false and every time the button is clicked we are going to revert its value so if it is false we are going to change it to true if it is true we are going to change it to false and then what we are doing is we are checking if this dot value is true then we want to return this string value start again but if this this dot value is false that means if the value of this value property is false in that case we are simply going to return this string done okay so from this change action service method so this method we are defining inside this action service class so when this method will be called it is going to return a string value either it is going to return start again or it is going to return done and it is going to return a string value based on the value of this value property okay so if i go back what it will do is when i click on this done button you see the value will change to true and here we can see start again if i click on it again you will see it is done if i click again it is showing start again so this is a very simple service i have just created this service to understand how we can use services with standalone components this service is not doing much this is a very simple service but it's enough to understand how a service works with standalone components okay then we also have this highlight directive which we are using in our detail component so if i again open detail component html you'll see that on this div element we are using this app highlight selector which is the selector for this highlight directive and all this highlight directive is doing is it is changing the background color it is setting some border on the element on which we are using it it is setting some border radius and padding so if i go back you'll see that here we have some background color we have some border some border radius and some padding okay so this has been done using the selector of this highlight directive we are using this selector on this div element so that div element has been styled like that all right then i also have a shared module and from this shared module what we are doing is we are declaring this highlight directive in this shared module and we are exporting this highlight directive from here and then we are importing this shared module in our app module so in the app module we are importing the shared module here you see in the app module we are simply declaring the app component home component and detail component we are not declaring our highlight directive we are declaring our highlight directive in the shared module in here and then we are importing this shared module in the app module 
so this is a very simple angular application and this is a standard angular application it does not use any standalone component yet but what we are going to do is we are going to change these components which we have in this project so for example we are going to change this app component to a standalone component we are going to change this home component to a standalone component and we are also going to change this detail component to a standalone component and we will see what changes we will have to do for that all right and we will also see how we can change this directive so in the shared folder we also have this highlight directive so how we can change this directive to a standalone directive because currently when we have created this directive we also need to declare it in an ng module currently we are declaring this highlight directive in this ng module the ng module which we are using on this shared module so that also we are declaring here but when we will change this highlight directive to a standalone directive at that time we will see that we don't need to declare this highlight directive anywhere so all this we will start learning from our next lecture this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day